Doc, I'm having a serious problem with my blood sugar readings in the mornings. They are high almost every morning and this is when I am fasting before I eat or drink anything. And to make it more confusing to me, when I go to sleep at night, my blood sugar readings are normal. They're less than 150. In fact, sometimes my readings are about 130 something after my dinner. So why on earth are my blood sugar readings high in the morning and I did not wake up overnight to have snacks or to have something sweet to drink, etc.? Why? Please explain this to me, Doc. Well, explain I will in today's video. I'm gonna talk about the two main reasons that blood sugar readings might be high in the morning in the fasting state for quite a few of you. Before I get into it, I am Dr. Amina Gunan, a physician and a health coach, and I help you get your blood sugar levels down to normal where they belong so that you can have good energy levels throughout the day so that you can banish food cravings and therefore control your weight, especially as you get older, and so that you can live a longer, overall, much healthier life. All right, so high blood sugar readings in the morning, high fasting blood sugar levels, that's a problem for a lot of people. They are generally good during the day and certainly at bedtime, blood sugar levels are normal, but lo and behold, they wake up and they are so exasperated because they're getting blood sugar readings of 180, sometimes 250 and even higher. And it's just very confusing as to why that's going on. Well, let's, before we get into the two main reasons for that, let's explain again, <laughs> a refresher, what is glucose? Glucose is a simple sugar and it is the uh, fuel that most of the cells of the body use to be able to function and carry out the different chores that they have to do. Um, tissues like the brain thrive on glucose. And in fact, glucose is so important that our bodies are able to make glucose. So if we never ate any starch or sugar for the rest of our lives, we wouldn't die because we are able to make glucose and liver can make glucose from a variety of ingredients, okay? So, you know, we can make glucose. Um, we do tend to get a lot of glucose from the food that we eat. So either way, we get it externally or we can make it, right? And there are two main reasons why the blood sugar levels might be high in the morning. One is a phenomenon called the dawn phenomena. Dawn as in morning, daybreak, right? So essentially in the normal cycle of our bodies, when we go to sleep at night, in preparation for us to face the day and all that we have to do during the day, right? The body produces hormones or chemicals such as uh, cortisol, um, which basically tell the liver, spurt out some glucose, get some energy ready for the day, right? So you're sleeping, you're in almost like a hibernation mode overnight, but then with the normal rhythms and cycles of the body day and night, right? It is an automatic thing for these hormones, cortisol, etc., to give the signal, well, basically these hormone levels increase. And then the body, when these hormones increase, produces a spurt of glucose, and then you wake up and you are able to face the day. The problem with people with type 2 diabetes is the underlying issue of insulin resistance. So that glucose is produced so that it goes into the cells to give them the energy to wake up and function. But if there's insulin resistance, it means that insulin is not working efficiently or quickly enough to channel or shuttle this glucose into the cells where it is needed for the energy of the cells. So instead of the glucose that is produced normally in preparation for the day being shuttled into the cell, it's lurking around within the bloodstream. It's hanging out in the blood for longer than normal. And so because it's taking so long for insulin to work to shuttle the glucose into the cells, that is why you have high blood sugar levels in the morning, the dawn phenomena. So essentially the problem with some people is insulin resistance making the dawn phenomena actually not be an efficient situation. So you might actually wake up and be a bit sluggish because yes, you had the spread of glucose, but it didn't go to where it, or it took too long to go to where it needed to go. So that's the first reason. Second reason for high blood sugar levels is another um, situation called the Samogi effect, um, S-O-M-O-G-Y-I, the Samogi effect. And in these cases, what happens is that for dinner, the meal was very uh, rich, maybe in sugar or starches, or essentially rich in foods that cause a significant spurt in blood glucose levels. And of course, 
blood glucose levels go up and the response of the body is to quickly get those levels back down to normal where they belong so that they don't stay high and cause you know toxicity to so to speak to the cells of the body now in bringing those high blood sugar levels back down to normal there is an over adjustment so essentially it's too vigorous uh decrease in blood glucose levels and the levels end up going low. They're going not just normal, but below the level of normal. So you have a situation of this big hump and then a dip, and because it goes low, but it needs to be normal. So the body is going to produce those chemicals, those hormones. So the same cortisol that we have a spurt of early in the morning, that's a stress hormone, and the dip to uh, to abnormal to below normal in blood sugar levels is a stressful situation and so the body produces cortisol and some of the other stress hormones like epinephrine norepinephrine glucagon and those tell the body oops we have a situation here we need to come back up with our blood sugar levels and so your blood sugar levels get bumped up higher with these chemicals and sometimes it bumps up way above normal and that's why in the morning you might have high blood sugar readings so it's a instead of having we talk about the need for stable blood sugar levels and that's what i talk about helping people to have stable blood sugar levels because the highs and lows the drastic highs and drastic lows essentially are stressful events and the body in really trying to to, to desperately get it to normal oftentimes will overshoot and then it brings it back up high but then it goes too high because again of the same insulin resistance situation so that yo-yo effect from that starts basically with a very starchy dinner causes ultimately by morning time a high blood sugar reading so those are the two main reasons for having high fasting blood sugar levels the dawn phenomena and the smoggy effect s-o-m-o-g-y-i how do you know which of these problems you have well the first thing to find out which of these you have is well first of all i should say go to your doctor get an idea from your doctor what's going on right but anyway many of you will have blood sugar meters and so the easiest first thing to do is to check your blood sugar levels overnight so you will check it before dinner and then you can check it after dinner to see what it is and then you'll have to wake up overnight maybe at midnight and check your blood sugar readings at that time to see if it dips to abnormally low levels abnormally low would be less than 70 and if you're measuring low blood sugar readings less than 70 then it probably indicates that you had a very starchy meal at dinner time now another reason for some people is actually that they're taking too much medicine too much insulin oftentimes right so they need to have the insulin adjusted if you're taking too much insulin then yes you know, even if you didn't have much starch to eat or particularly if you didn't have much starch to eat you're going to drop quite low and then you're going to have that rebound high blood glucose by morning time right so that's the easiest way to find out what's going on check your blood sugar levels all night dawn so samogi effect your sugar is going to be low at about midnight or just halfway through the night but with a dawn phenomenon you're going to have relatively stable blood sugar levels overnight and then you suddenly when you wake up in the morning going to see the spurt the high blood glucose readings right so that's generally how you detect the difference between the two how do you tackle this? Well, for the dawn phenomena, we said the primary problem is insulin resistance. So yes, we all have that little spurt of glucose in the morning to help us get ready for the day. But if our insulin is not working properly and efficiently to sh shuttle the glucose into the cells, then we'll have the high level, high readings. You have to tackle resistance. And the only way to tackle resistance is to decrease your body's need for insulin. The only way to decrease your body's need for insulin is to decrease the things that basically carry blood glucose levels up. The commonest reason for high blood glucose levels overall is having lots of sweetened foods and very refined starches. There are other reasons including excess stress, excessive stress in your life which would cause excessive steroid cortisol production and sometimes there are medications that can do it as well but broadly speaking it's going to be the external that what we're taking in the sugar that we're taking in and we need to cut that down for long enough for there to be a bit of a reset where then the body is able to start responding to insulin okay so that's basically how you're going to manage the insulin resistance that's leading to the dawn effect 
for the samogi effect well it's gonna probably be looking at your dinner well first thing is probably your medicine so to talk to your doctor about the medicines and if maybe you're taking too much insulin if it's not too much insulin or too much of your diabetes medicines glipizide and those then it's probably going to be your dinner the quality of your dinner and you have to look at your dinner and whether it's imbalanced too much starch too much sugar too many desserts right maybe too much alcohol even and make it so that you're having a meal that is more balanced in terms of more protein like right? so less starch more protein more healthy fats more fiber so you have a slower release of the energy from your food now i know the big fear for a lot of people who are diabetic and that would be my fear too if i'm taking a medicine that could potentially you know kill if i take too much of it specifically insulin then my big concern would be oh my i want to make sure i eat enough i want to make sure i have enough carbs with my meal to take this insulin that i need to take and so it's easy to just sort of focus on that because you know we would be afraid of dying but maybe shifting slowly into thinking that okay let me focus on feeding, on nourishing my body, nourishing my cells, rather than just focusing on keeping my blood glucose levels up. If you shift the focus more to nutrition, right? Giving your body the nutrition it needs, your body is not going to need to worry. Like essentially the glucose will handle itself because we can produce glucose from the liver depending on the different hormonal responses, right? So essentially focusing more on the quality of your meals right and nourishing yourself and not worrying as much about just one number which would be oh glucose i'm going to focus on keeping my glucose levels higher right focus more on nutrition okay i hope you all found this um, explanation helpful right essentially two main reasons for high fasting blood sugar readings in the morning one is the dawn phenomena where because of insulin resistance your body's not shuttling the glucose into the cells where it's needed and two the samogi effect where you had a pretty high starch or sugar evening meal resulting in a very high spike in glucose and then a very drastic dip which is followed by a higher spike again right um check these uh, differentiate between these two by checking your overnight blood sugar levels and if your blood sugar level is dropping maybe your problem is the samogi effect if your blood sugar level is relatively stable and then spurts up maybe your problem is the dawn effect ultimately seek medical attention from your doctor you probably need to make some adjustments in your overall health regimen where your diabetes is concerned because ideally we want good stable blood sugar levels fasting blood sugar levels should be up to about 100 maybe 110 uh, it should not be less than 70 for the most part okay thank you for watching if you found this video helpful definitely share it with somebody who you think might benefit from this uh, knowledge take care until the next video bye